Welcome to the Sunday stream. That's correct. I'm Arthur. I hope you guys are doing so well in quarantine with your family members and enjoying all the videos that we're posting. I want you guys to look down below and hit the subscribe button. You turn the post notifications on. As soon as you do that, you're gonna watch every other video that you guys didn't watch. And if you did watch it, watch it again. And then leave a comment and then like it. And then after that, you share it. You do the whole nine yards. Understand? Top notch. All right. This has been Arthur on your Sunday morning welcoming. Thanks, Arthur. You the freaking man. I'm probably going to go crazy today. Do you know why I'm going crazy? Probably the same reason you guys are. It's because I miss you. I miss you. If you don't miss me, that's okay. You probably miss your friends. probably miss your classes. Maybe even learning. Some of you miss learning. Today we are kicking off a brand new series called Big Picture. So we're gonna be talking for the next few weeks about how to see the big picture in different areas of our life and what to do when it's hard for us to see the big picture. Like, you guessed it, right now! It can be hard to see the big picture when we're missing our friends, when we're missing uh, out on so many opportunities, doing sports, doing things that we normally would do, especially this time of year, um, can be tough. So we wanted to talk about what to do when we cannot see the big picture. All right, today we are talking about how you can have an impact on your family. And to help with that, we have Kimberly Myers Pinkle that we will have with us here in a few minutes. As we're sitting though and thinking about this time and the end of this time, whenever that is, whether it's in a month or two months or three months, who knows, I wonder what kind of people we are going to be on the other side of this. I wonder what kind of person, what kind of follower of Jesus, what kind of Christian you are going to be on the other side of this situation, of this quarantine, of this stay at home time. My encouragement for you guys is that we still have time. There's still time for you to spend today uh, with Jesus. Just look at today, maybe look at tomorrow. If instead of watching TV, instead of playing video games, whatever you do for in your, in your free time that you have, what if instead of that, just for today, you spend time with Jesus? So whether that's you go for a walk, whether in like in nature and experience God that way, whether it's you listening to worship music, whether it's you reading your Bible, whether it's prayer, whether it's any or all of these combined, what if we spent time doing that today and just kind of felt what that was like and thought about, man, if I do that, not even not even replacing all the other stuff every day, but what if we just do that every day? Because we do have time. Like, you do have time, I'm telling you. If there was ever a time that you had time, that time is this time. And so to help us with that, we've got one of your small group leaders, Elena, seventh grade girls leader, we love you. She's gonna share just a little bit about who Jesus is to her. And as we think about that, I want you to be thinking about who Jesus is to you and maybe who he could be to you when you spend more time with him. Check it out. To me, Jesus is, um, it's a loaded question. It's basically the director of my life, I guess, if we're using movie terms. And honestly, I'm not even the main character. I'm just a supporting role. He's the main character. God's the main character. Uh, but he's really used, in hindsight, it's easy to see that he's, he's used a lot of, well, he's used my whole life, it, all situations in my life, in order to get me to the, the point I am today. He's always been there for me. He's allowed many things in my life, but they've all worked out for my good, um, especially to the point where I am today. Um, he's my life. Man, thank you so much, Elena. I, I love your story. I love how God is continuing to work in your life, but also how he has used you and the things that he's done in your life. Like I love how you use the illustration, no pun intended, of a story and how you are not the main character in yours, but how you are a supporting role. Uh, that's this truth for all of us, for everybody watching this video. We are not the main character of our story. Jesus is the center of our story. He's the center of our lives. It actually says in scripture um, that he is the author of life. And so he's the author of our lives. So he's the author of your life. You are just a part of the story. Okay, so be, be encouraged by that. Be encouraged that you don't, one, 
you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to hold it all together. You don't have to carry the pressure of being the main character. But at the same time, it's important that we realize that we are not the main character, that it's not all about us, but that it is all about Jesus. So thank you so much, Elena, for sharing your story and sharing that piece of truth with all of us today. Love you. Well, in other news, the series is big picture, so guess what today we're doing? We're playing a game with some big pictures. All right, here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna show you a picture. It's gonna be zoomed in. You're not gonna really be able to tell what it is, okay? Boah, zoomed in. You're gonna have to guess what it is. I'll probably give you some options because they might be kind of hard to tell without any options. So I'm gonna give you some options. Just like last week, use that live chat, respond, or just know it as you watch. Um, but we'd love to interact with you on that live chat. See what you think, see if you might be right, see if you might be wrong. We'll find out. All right, are you ready? You just gotta say what you think it is. Number one, roll a film. Roll that tape. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I have my co-host here. This is Nora, my daughter, it's Bear. His name is Mr. Bear. He has a voice, it sounds like this. Well, hello there, everybody. It's good to be your host this morning with you, mister. Well, I thank you, Mr. Bear. Yes, I love hosting games. Look at this picture, number one, go. What do you think it is? What could it be? It's orange. What else is orange? I don't know. Could it be a raspberry? Raspberry. It might be a raspberry or planet Mars. Or maybe it's a Nerf football or a basketball. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You, I thought you were running the game. I thought you were running the game. We'll find out. We'll find out. It is a basketball. Picture number one is a basketball. If you ever questioned it, if you ever didn't know, now you know. I'm weird. All right, number two, is this bacon on a plate? Is it a cooler? Or is it stadium chairs? Or might it be a peacock? We don't know, it could be any of those. Which one is it? Bacon on a plate, cooler, stadium chairs, or a peacock? I know what it is, I'll tell them. Everybody, now you know it is a stadium chair. Next one, is it a wall, a Starbucks cup, a typewriter, or a road sign? Which of those would it be? What's a road sign? Like the ones that say bears ahead? Look out, cause the bears are all gonna eat you? No, bears will not eat you. Mr. Bear will eat the piece of bacon on a plate. Good to know, Mr. Bear. Good to know, what is it, what is it, what is it? It is a Starbucks cup. What is Starbucks? Is that like a two buck, a two point buck, three point, four point, five point, six point? Why don't bears get any points? I want some points. What do you mean you want points? Guys, I'm going insane. I'm making friends with Mr. Bear over here. What do you mean you're going insane? See what I'm saying? Next picture. Is this a pastry, a seashore, construction site, or, ooh, a hurricane? I hope it's not a hurricane. I don't know what it is. We'll have to wait and see you tell them what it is. What is it? Is it a pastry, a seashore, a construction site, or a hurricane? All right. It is a pastry. Oh, I love pastries. Those are so delicious. I know they are. They're very good. Last one for you guys. Is it a painting, a birch tree, aliens, or a chair? Is it a painting? A birch tree, aliens, or a chair? What do you think? What do you think? Well done, everybody. That's enough of me forever. Yes, you're right, Mr. Bear. Go home. It's a really large bear, but I've had enough of him, okay? I've had enough of him. Now, I'm going crazy. Are you taking crazy pills or something? Guys, I do a lot of accents and impersonations. If you do accents and impersonations, tell us in the chat. I'd love to see a video of them. We'll start including stuff. This is what I want to do, okay? I want to include you guys in these videos. So if you ever like do stuff at home that's goofy, take a video of it, send it to us. Send it to us through email, through text, through Instagram, whatever works for you to get it to us, send it to us. Whether that's you playing a song, you doing something goofy, if you're on TikTok and you make something and you want to share it, we'll put it on here. Matter of fact, check these out. Ooh, what does this button do? Please, please, do not push the button! You have no idea of what it- Do do fart. Ooh, what-
Yeah, especially if you think hot sauce is hot. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. You know, well, well. You got to smell it, Jeff. Oh. Ow. This is hard. Oh, Ken, you're so mean. Ow. Ow. All right, this is that. Ow. Why did you do that? I eat it. What are you talking about? Ow. Stop, stop. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. He just. Look, this hurts. Yes, so I wasn't kidding. We want you guys on this video, on these videos, okay? So it's gonna be fun. We'll include different stuff every single week. If you have something that you wanna do or you wanna do a challenge this week, make up a challenge, send it to us. We'll put it in the Sunday stream next week, all right? Guaranteed it, guaranteed. Now, as promised, we said Kimberly Myers Pinkle was going to be with us talking about how we can have an impact on our family. So let's bring on Kimberly. She's here with us now. What we are going to be looking at today is how we have an impact on our family, but we're looking at it through the lens of the life of Joseph. That's what this whole series, Big Picture, is actually about. It's about Joseph's life. So a lot of you know his story. He was a dreamer. He could interpret dreams. He had, uh, he had a bunch of brothers and a dad who loved him a lot. Maybe he didn't love his brothers as much, so he was the favorite. Then he got sold into slavery, right? Spoiler alert. Then he got put into prison. Then he comes out of prison. We'll get there later. But today, we're actually focusing on just at the beginning of Joseph's life. So there's four verses in Genesis chapter 37. Check these out. It says this. It says, now Israel, Israel was also Jacob. That's the same person. So that's Joseph's dad. It says, now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he was the son of his old age, which just means that he's Joseph's youngest son because Jacob was old. Israel was old when he had Joseph. So son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. So if you've heard of that, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor dream coat, there you go. That's what he's talking about. A robe of many colors. Then it goes on and it says this. But when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Ever had the favorite? Been the favorite? Not been the favorite? You know what they're talking about. Now Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright and behold, your sheaf gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, are you indeed to reign over us or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. So if there's anything we can take away from this today is that Joseph was not liked by his brothers. But what is interesting about this story, and as we read, it's that Joseph and his dad both kind of made some actions in these four verses that impacted the family, right? And so our, we're kind of navigating this story today and wondering and learning about what does it look like for us to have a positive, a life-giving, a Jesus-like impact on our family. All right, so to help with that, here we go. Kimberly myers Pinkle, thank you so much for being here. Here is your first question, all right? Question number one is just how do your actions impact your family? Yeah, all of my, um, all of my actions impact everything that we do in our house. Sure. Um, just from going to the grocery store. If I don't go to the grocery store, particularly now because we're low on toilet paper. This is the first time I've had to get toilet paper, but we're getting low. So I'm going to have to go to the grocery store. If we don't go to the grocery store and get toilet paper, if I don't find toilet paper, yeah. that's going to be just, that's good. No, we don't even, we don't even want to go there. It'll no, thank problem. you. No, thank you. So like everything that I do, if I don't cook food, people are going to get hungry. Yeah. If I don't wash clothes, people are going to start to stink. If we don't take showers, you know, we're all going to stink. If we don't, um, if we don't enforce uh, some sort of schedule or make sure, you know, people are doing their schoolwork or if I'm not showing up for work, it affects everybody around me. You can't just, you know, it's everything has an action. And whatever I speak into or towards people or to people also has a reaction to you. Yeah. So our tongue is, they say, is our tongue is mightier than the sword. So the words that we speak to each other, you can either speak words of life or words of death. And so, like, when we reference Joseph's story in the very beginning, as his father was, you know, pouring out words of life into him, he was also, he, what he wasn't saying, too, 
was also pouring words of death into his brothers because of that jealousy and resentment that they had with each other. So yeah, everything I do has an impact, whether it's positive or negative. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting to think about uh, Joseph's story with his dad uh, in that way and how because Joseph was so loved by his dad that his dad just poured love and words of affirmation, I'm sure, onto him, but didn't do that for his brothers. And so because of that, his brothers felt that resentment you're talking about. And so even how that can make its way into how we interact with our families, right? And how you said everything you do at this point has an impact on your family. The same is true for you guys at home, whether you're a leader or whether you're a student, the same is true. So whatever you do, whether however you spend your time, the words that you say, whether it's things that are really good, things that are really life-giving or things that aren't, those things have an impact. That's important for us to know because then otherwise we can just kind of live however we want to live, forget about any consequences to what we say or our actions. And that's not how Jesus wants us to live. That's not his desire. His desire is for us to see ready for it, the big picture, not just our one little moment or our one feeling that we have at any given time, but he wants us to be able to see in the big picture. So Kimberly, kind of on the flip side of that last question, uh, this next one, is as much as your actions impact your family, how much do your family's actions impact you? Yeah, absolutely. So just as much as my actions have an impact on people, mm -hmm. so do the actions of everybody in my family sure. and in my household. Yeah. So if if they're not speaking words of life, if they're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause problems. If they're not doing their share or not doing their part, it causes a problem. It adds stress to other people. Um, it causes resentment and all of those things. Just as I, just as I said before, everybody's actions have a ripple effect. Yeah. So just like a rock when you put it into water, whatever you drop in there goes out to whoever it is, whoever's in that perimeter, whoever's in that area. Mm -hmm. So whatever you drop in there, you want to make sure that it's positive as possible because you want that energy to go to other people, especially when we're in confined spaces right now. And it's hard because we're starting to get irritated with each other. What? And the fact that I like the only place I can find to be alone is in the garage right now. Like, <laughs> That starts to get irritable, but we have to remember that this is temporary yeah. and that um, and that it's important that we stick together and that we're in it together and uh, that, that we're speaking life to each other and the actions that we do are helpful, helpful to each other. Yeah, that's really good, Kimberly. Thanks so much for for sharing that with us. I think that's applicable to each and every one of us watching right now. It's funny, the ripple effect in that picture, because normally when we when we think of a ripple effect, we're thinking of maybe throwing a rock or dropping a rock into the lake. Sometimes, if you've ever done it, I know I did when I was younger, and maybe sometimes still now, but you get the biggest rock you can find and you throw it as far as you can into the lake. It makes a big splash and then obviously a ripple effect from there. But with our confinements right now and how we're kind of staying at home, it's kind of more like I had this uh, coffee mug that I had some hot cocoa in earlier today. Um, and it's kind of more like instead of throwing a rock into the lake, you're kind of throwing a rock into, into this little mug and it drops right in. And then obviously there's some ripples. And instead of the ripples just going out and going out and to wherever they go in a lake, they're kind of going and they're hitting walls because we're in one place. And the walls are either our literal house walls or they are a sibling. They're hitting a brother, sister, mom, dad, grandparent, uncle, aunt, whoever's in your house. And they're bouncing off. And so it's, it's almost even that much more important that our actions, that our words, that they're life-giving, that they're Christ-like, that they're of God, that they're moving the kingdom of God forward and not bringing people down. Because it comes back to that idea of life and death. Like, are we dropping rocks? Are we dropping pebbles? Keep that image in your mind. Are we dropping pebbles with our actions and our words of life? or of death because those pebbles and the things we're doing and saying are creating ripple effect. And so it's important that we're able to step back because sometimes even when we think about this as a picture, the only thing we see is us is us maybe dropping it down and we don't really see the ripple effects happening and we don't see how people feel or how they're processing what we're doing. So it's important that we step back and see the picture. So Kimberly, with that being said, I just wonder if there is anything from your life um, that you could share with us from maybe when you were younger and it was hard for you to see uh, the big picture, um, but maybe a little bit further down the road you were able to, but in the moment it was hard. Is there anything like that you could share with us? Um, sure. Um, I would probably say, I mean, the one that pops into my head immediately is when my parents got divorced. I was 13 and um, I could only see the narrow scope of what it affected me. How does this gonna affect me? 
what is it doing to me personally? And there's nothing wrong with that because I think that's just the natural feeling because divorce is a big thing. Yeah. It is a really big thing. But what I was unable to see or what I was unable to understand and what was not explained to me was the bigger picture. Like why? No one ever explained to me why. No one ever communicated the underlying currents. And, and maybe some of that stuff shouldn't have been. I was only 13. But I was still 13 and there's a lot more that I could have handled and understood. And I think when you can communicate that out, you can see things in a bigger picture. Now that I'm older, and it wasn't much longer after that, probably when I was about 20, that, um, that I started getting all the truth about why they got divorced and that sort of thing. And I could see the bigger picture. And now even more so that I can, now that it's you know so many years later, that um, I can really see how God orchestrated it and how his hand was in it. And how it actually was for the best and for the good. If things had been different, I mean, things were a little bit different back then. So um, we didn't have counseling and that kind of stuff as, as prevalent as we do now. So I think maybe that would have, that certainly would have helped. But at that time, I really could not have, have seen the bigger picture. And that, and, and that was, that was detrimental for my growth, um, for my spiritual growth and for, for my emotional growth. Now it's a little bit different. You know, there's a lot of the resources and and help and I think honestly if if anybody's going through this as a kid yeah. communication is best and ask the questions just don't be afraid to ask the questions mm. um, of your parents if you're going through it because it's uh it's tough it's tough but when you can see the bigger picture yeah it's it's uh, it things get a little bit clearer and you recognize it really has nothing to do with you mm. um, because you don't cause that sort of thing so so that was probably one, definitely one time when I didn't see the bigger picture, and that was, it was really difficult to process. Wow. So. Dang, thank you so much for, for sharing that, Kimberly. I know that that's probably not easy, and even though it's far in the past, it's still something that was very personal to you. And so thanks for sharing that. For any of our students, I'm sure that some of you, a good chunk of you, have had to go through that maybe. Or maybe you're, you might have to one day, or you are right now. Uh, I hope that you're able to find a way to see the bigger picture. Um, and as Kimberly said at the end, I think right there where she said that, uh, that that's not your fault, that it has nothing to do with you. Yeah, being able to see the big picture will help mm -hmm. immensely. Before we let you go today, and it's been awesome having you, I wonder if there is one more thing that you would want to add to put the cherry on top of this day for our students about this topic. Okay, one thing that I would say to the middle school age bracket is mm -hmm. um, challenge yourself. Come on. If you want to impact your family, um, put your screens down. Yeah. Put your screens down and um, come up with ways to challenge yourself and to challenge your family. Wow. Do something fun. Currently, we've got movie night going on, and when the weather kicks in, we'll probably try and do a little bit more outside. Awesome. Um, but I would challenge yourself that in a way that can help others. Maybe it's... Um, getting your family to, to write cards, you know, we hear a lot about that. We think, oh gosh, that seems so simple, but it's really effective. Um, or if there's other ways that we can do things together as a family. Yeah. Um, and if it comes from you and it's your idea, all the better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, um, I would encourage you to look at this as temporary. Yeah. And I know it's a little frustrating, um, but it's really easy for us to just get sucked into the digital world. It's easy for me. It's easy for me to let my kids do it. I mean, it's very easy. We're all doing it. We're all working online and then school online and it's, it's, you're there, you're there. Yeah. But I would, I would think a really impacting your family would be able to just pull away from those digitals and do stuff together. That's maybe seeming a little bit more simple or stuff that just really connects you t together sure. because um, that's really what's going to be the impact together. And I would encourage families to pray together. We're terrible at it. Um, I mean, we do it at night and stuff, but um, I would I would encourage to just have a prayer time and and how that would look and and it doesn't have to be you know holding hands and it, it needs to be just from your heart yeah. and uh, I don't know there's a lot of ways that we can impact but it has to be um, it has to be positive you know you got to really work on the positive and try to keep the negative on the down low so to speak sure. um, no one wants to be Joseph's brother. So no one wants to turn into those dudes. No one does. They're jerks. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what would, that's what I would do. I would challenge you to come up with ways to be an impact within your family, um, 
in connecting with them outside of the digital and uh, also how you might be able to com impact your community in a positive way. Wow, I love that challenge for us and for our students. Kimberly, thank you so much for that deposit into us uh, as we watched this morning. Guys, I hope that that was encouraging for you. I hope that there was something you're able to take away from that and apply to your life. Remember that life or death thing. Remember that pebble thing. Remember all those images and the importance of being able to step back and see the big picture. That was one of the other things that came to my mind actually as, as Kimberly was sharing. It's it's this idea of like, how do we see the big picture? It's like, okay, Sam, great. Like, see the big picture, be life, not death, be like Jesus, don't not be like Jesus. Great, I get it. But how, when it's hard to see the big picture, do we actually see it? And this simple thing came to my mind. Sometimes, my camera's probably trying to autofocus or something, it's really blurry. Can you see the bridge of my nose? I don't even know how wide, how wide you can see. But I'm guessing you can't see how many fingers I'm holding up. And sometimes when we're so close to a situation, it's really hard for us to see the big picture of how, what's actually happening. And I was actually holding two fingers up, but maybe I was like this, and I was like, man, and I was doing something with my hands and you couldn't even see it because we were too close and we weren't stepping back and we couldn't see what the big picture was. And the big picture was that I was doing some kind of dance. Ridiculous. But we love you guys. A couple things for you before you go. Kelsey's gonna give you some closing action steps and announcements. Um, just know that we have Zoom groups right after this. We're so glad that you're watching. Seriously though, send us some things that we can put in this video. If you have cool things you're doing this week at home, goofy things you're doing this week at home, send them to us. Let us know about it. Or if you think we should do some kind of challenge. If you think I should do something ridiculous for next weekend's video, let me know. I'm game, okay? I'll do it. What do you want me to do? Climb a mountain? I probably can't do that, but I could try. All right, over to Kelsey. Check it out. We'll see you soon. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning into the stream today for Breakaway. We're really excited to be able to still communicate with you guys this way. Even if it's not face to face, it's still a great touch point for us to be able to talk about truth, identity, and community together. We hope that you really learned a lot from Kimberly today as she talked about how you could still impact your family during this time. Obviously, you guys are around your family a lot, and we know that can be kind of crazy and stressful, but it's really important to think about the impacts that we can have in the environment we are right now. We hope that you come back to our YouTube channel tomorrow for episode eight of the show. After this, we have our Zoom groups again where we take the opportunity for us to all get together, see everybody's faces, kind of chat for a little bit, but then also join in in our small groups individually to just check in with each other and our leaders and have some great meaningful discussion of what we talked about. Now, today I really want you guys to make an opportunity to really speak up. If you haven't said anything yet in your small groups, I really encourage you to do so today. Talk about how you're feeling, how you're doing, um, how you're using the opportunity to explore new things. We really want everybody to participate because we think it adds incredible value to the time you guys have together. I love you guys all so much and we'll see you in groups right after this. Bye.